Basaraga may be a bit slow, but he is also the heaviest hitter in Grand Blue Relink, which makes him appealing as a character for all damage enthusiasts. The amount of damage this character can output is pretty crazy if you can actually get all of your attacks to connect, and he can be a very tanky and difficult character to kill at the same time thanks to basically always having Stout Heart up and the ability to survive 1 HP for a long period of time. The general playstyle of the character usually involves looking for windows to attack and charging up your heavy hitting attacks so you can unleash them on enemies, which can be a little difficult against highly mobile foes, but if you're able to master his timings and understand boss windows, you can get a lot of benefit from Vasaraga in any fight. In this video I want to discuss Vasaraga, discuss general playstyle and setup, talk about some strengths and weaknesses, and showcase some practical use in harder raid fights. I want to cover every character in the future, so if you do enjoy guide content like this on Relink, RPGs in general, and especially Xenoblade, and are interested in seeing more, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because it does help me out so much. Also, apologies if my voice sounds bad today. I am sick, but I did still want to get this out. Let's get into it. So, believe it or not, the most optimal playstyle for Vasaraga damage-wise actually relies on running either one or no damaging skills because you can get significantly higher DPS without using most skills meaning a lot of skills are just for utility since his main source of damage comes from his charged normal attacks. Essentially, Vasaraga has a few different combos he can do, and Vasaraga players typically refer to these as light and heavy attacks. His light attacks are bound to the X button, or whatever your normal attack combination is, and his heavy attacks are bound to Y, or whatever is usually the combo finisher button. Essentially, Vasaraga has three different ground combinations based on how many light attacks you use before your charged heavy attacks. By using one light attack and then going into heavy attacks, Vasaraga will charge at the enemy, and the damage will increase depending on how long you charge the attack, with full damage being when he gloves. Using a charge attack again immediately after this will do another similar type of attack. Typically, this combo is only used when you want to close the gap between yourself and the enemy, since the damage is low compared to his other options. Combo B is going to be your main combo you use for damage, so essentially using two light attacks into your heavy attacks. Each heavy attack here has two slices that can both do tremendous damage when fully charged, capping out at over 1.5 million, meaning potentially over 3 million from each of these two charged attacks. This is more valuable than using combo C because combo C only does one slice each. So even if the damage ratio is higher, the fact that they have the exact same damage cap makes combo B, or the double slices, significantly better when you're actually reaching these damage caps since you can potentially get twice as much damage. It is also worth noting that you can dodge cancel out of his light attacks, meaning you can get to your much stronger heavy attacks faster while also having some mobility before charging your heavy attacks so you can reposition if an enemy has moved further away. And if they've moved far away, you can quickly use combo A to gap close. You do not need to fully charge combo A if you're just using it to gap close. And if you only use one of the heavy attacks, you're able to immediately go into another light attack which will lead into your combo B heavy attacks, which can allow you to both close the gap and start a high damage combo a little bit easier. Ideally with Vasaraga, you're going to want to be getting off as many combo Bs as possible to maximize your damage just because of how much it could potentially do. It can be a little difficult to hit caps on everything, so you may want to be running more damage than usual as well for this setup, and make sure you're fully charging it to get the most benefit out of it. Looking at his support skills, Vasaraga also gets bonuses from landing these charged heavy attacks with his unique mechanic, the Grinoth Gauge, which fills every time you land one of these attacks. You will gain Stout Heart, so the ability not to be interrupted when taking damage, Defense up, so taking less damage, and then attack up depending on how much of the gauge is filled, which is actually kind of useful on Basaraga since, like I said, it can be a little bit more difficult to hit some of the caps on his spinning attack, as there is double slice. These are pretty much just free bonuses and not too difficult to maintain, which is really nice, and can make him fairly tanky as a character. His other support skill, Mela's Unleashed, simply allows him to give himself Stout Heart if he doesn't already have it without having to perform any heavy attacks. So something nice to use during downtime if you have no gauge. Dying will remove the bonuses, but will remove the gauge, giving you a little bit of time to get your bonuses back with another charged heavy attack upon revival. All in all, Vasaraga is a more straightforward character than others, but does require smart positioning and understanding of the most out of his high damage, heavy hitting attacks, since it can be very enemy easy for enemies to move out of the way while you're charging your attack, given how long they can take. Let's take a look at the setup now. So I know I say this every single time, and I'm going to say it one more time, the best weapon you can possibly have is the Terminus weapon, mostly because of the Catastrophe bonus effect, giving you a 50% attack boost and 100% boost to your damage cap. When your maximum health is below 45,000, meaning you're going to be doing a lot of additional damage with this weapon compared to every other weapon in the game. And Sigil Booster is a really good effect to have as well, just to boost all your trait levels to get a little bit extra benefit out of all of your sigils you have equipped, which is really awesome. As far as the imbued trait, this is the first time I'm not running crit rate up. I'm running weak point damage this time around. 
And the main reason for that is twofold. One, I have 96% critical hit rate without it already, thanks to uh, overmasteries and uh, the two critical hit rate 5 pluses I'm running. And two, because Vasaraga needs a little bit more to hit damage cap sometimes compared to some other characters, and this can be one of the easiest ways to do that just by kind of standing behind an enemy if you're able to uh, position yourself in such a way where you're able to do that. This is also how I'm getting my source of guts, and I'm also getting a boost to my attack a little bit here along with a couple other traits that boost my attack as well to give myself a bit more attack just in general, which is pretty nice to have as well. Guts, of course, uh, allows you to serve at 1 HP one time, and that's just a really nice effect to have in any fight. It also will not trigger on his Undying effect, which is something from one of his skills, so you do not have to worry about that. As far as the Sigils, I'm running an Obligatory 4 Damage Cap 5 Pluses. Two of these have Attack Up on them, so because of the Vasaraga setup I'm running where I don't really have many skills, or I only have one skill equipped right now, and sometimes you might not even want to run any, the, the sub-traits that are like Quick Cooldown and stuff like that are not as valuable here, so I'm just not running them. I'm running two damage caps with attack on them just to boost my attack as much as possible. I'm getting the full 2000 attack value here with the current setup that I have, which is really nice. I have Aegis, just this kind of balances out one of the tyranny effects I have and gives me a decent amount of maximum health around 41,000 or so, which is pretty nice to make sure that I'm able to live attacks, especially with the defense buff, especially with Stout Hard, I'm able to keep attacking a lot of times without having to worry too much. So that's really nice to have. Then Potion Hoarder is a really good trait, not only on him, but basically on everyone. Especially on him, though, because there's a lot of things that'll be lowering your own maximum health, depending on what setup you're running. And uh, if you're running the Undying ability, you'll always be uh, you'll be going low on health if you're planning to use that optimally. And uh, you'll also be going to 1 HP no matter what and when that effect ends. So you're definitely going to want Potion Hoarder to kind of counteract the effects of that. I'm also running War Elemental. As you might imagine, this is a really good effect. Free way to bypass the damage cap, you get an additional 20% damage against basically every enemy, so really, really fantastic sigil to have just based on anyone, especially for someone like Basaraga. Then I have my two supplementary damage fives. With two of these equipped, I get a 74% chance of it dealing additional 20% damage, which is always pretty nice to have. Uh, helps a lot when you're hitting really hard Basaraga, because even the supplementary damage procs are easily over 300,000, which is really nice. Then I have less is more. So this is one of the only characters I would recommend running this on. One of the only two right now, I would say. So with just one of these equipped, you get a 48% attack boost with one skill assigned, 64% with zero assigned. Now, you could go all the way to level 30 with this, depending on how the how you can fit it into your setup. But usually, stacking different sources of attack increase is going to be better, since a lot of them are not tied to the same multiplier. But I, running two less is more might not be bad, just because of how beneficial it can be with the... Uh, high, high attack additive it can give you. So yeah, I'm only running one skill on the setup that I'm going to be showing off in this right now, so less is more has pretty nice benefit for the free 48% attack boost. And then we have quick charge. I would say at least running one level of this is pretty much required because Valsaria has really slow charge speed on his heavy attack, so just running one of these can basically turn into an effective DPS increase because you're able to charge your... Your uh, heavy attacks a lot quicker. The minus 21% means you're effectively going to be charging at least 20% faster, which is always really nice to have. And it also boosts your attack power even further as well, so there's just a lot of benefit to running one of these, which is really nice. Then we have charge attack damage 5+. plus. So this is going to basically be increasing the damage of your charge attack, which is pretty much the only real source of your damage anyway, so this doesn't really matter too much that it's only boosting that effect. It's just a really nice free attack boost to have, which is really awesome. And then finally, I've got my two critical hit rate 5 pluses to hit as much critical hit rate as possible. I'm at 96% with the current setup that I have. And uh, Stamina and Tyranny are the sub-traits on these. Just, just gives really nice attack boost. 36% with Tyranny, another 51% with Stamina if I'm at maximum health. And even if I'm not at maximum health, the uh, ability on the Undying ability does at least give an attack boost as well. So I shouldn't have too many issues hitting the caps on a lot of these abilities. You could say all these attack increases can be overkill, especially because the second uh, hit of the uh, scythe attack the, of the charge combo B is probably going to be hitting cap most of the time anyway, and uh, it's mainly just the first hit you're trying to cap out on the first attack, but even besides that, it's still nice to uh, be able to do that because you can do a lot of damage if you're able to kind of optimize and maximize this damage with uh, this kind of setup. And if you're wondering why I'm not running these effects, his unique sigils, it's because the traits are just not very useful at all. So... 
The first one just makes your Grinoth gauge deplete slower. This is not really necessary with Vostrog at all. I would say it's actually pretty easy to keep up most of the time unless the boss is in a downtime phase. And if he is, that's not really a big deal. I would say most of the time this is never really going to be beneficial. And then Ebony's Poise, the other one is uh, really, really bad with the optimal Vasaraga damage setup because it just makes your skill cooldowns a lot lower and we're not really running skills because it's just a DPS loss to run skills most of the time outside of a couple utility options. So this is just not really a good one to run either, which is a little unfortunate. And final things to mention is, uh, I forgot to mention sub traits on these. Improved healing is here because the only less is more plus that I had. Improved healing is not really a good sub trait, but we just have it anyway. Quick Charge has more attack on it to make sure I'm hitting the attack cap. And then Charge Attack has Improved Dodge. Improved Dodge is just a really good ability to have in general. So this is going to be a bit of an awkward section to talk about for obvious reasons, but I did want to talk about the skills that he has anyway, just so you understand what he has access to. And if, especially maybe if you're earlier on in the game and can't damage cap some of his heavy attacks, it might be more useful or you can understand some of the utility options. It could be worth bringing depending on team compositions or if you're in coordinated team play. So first up, we have Immortal Pain. This is the one skill I sometimes do like bringing, depending on the situation. I actually do like this skill a lot. It gives debuff immunity and Undying, which allows you to basically live at 1 HP no matter what while the skill remains active, and it has a pretty long active time window, which is pretty nice. I do really, really like this skill. Undying also has an attack boost attached to it, which is really nice. And uh, it's one of the things that allows Vosara to be really, really tanky also and just basically not die, which is also really nice as an effect to have. And then, of course, we have his other abilities, Battalions of Fear. This is just a lunge for this axe kind of as a gap closer, but, of course, your combo 1 already kind of, or combo A already kind of acts as a gap closer anyway, so this isn't really something that uh, really is needed to be used, especially because the damage just isn't really that high compared to your actual heavy-hitting uh, normal attacks. Violent Shadows. This is a circle attack that will basically always constantly damage foes as long as you keep it active and will restore your own health. This is like, all right, is just kind of a self-healing option, but with stuff like Potion Hoarder, it's also not really needed. And then once again, the damage is just not super high, so you don't really need it as a damaging ability either. And then we have Great Scythe Grinoth. The main benefit of this is that it deals a high amount of stun damage because the actual damage isn't really that impressive, but I don't really think stun damage really matters much on Vasaraga because Link Attacks aren't something you're going to be doing very often with him because most of the time it's going to be a big DPS loss unless you can activate Link Time or something like that or if it's right at the end of one of your combination attacks, but that's usually pretty rare, in a, especially with randoms online. It can be chained into a Y attack, but it's not going to be chaining into your best Y attacks. That's the other kind of negative part of that. And then we have Forgotten Tails. This grants hostility and drain. This makes him more likely to be targeted by foes, and you get to recover HP upon dealing damage. Once again, this is okay, but it doesn't really synergize super well with uh, just going for the maximum amount of damage with uh, your charged attacks and... Uh, Kind of trying to stay at full HP most of the time anyway. And Immortal Pain is already good enough just to kind of bring as a way to live with 1 HP no matter what. So you don't really need... I don't, I don't really think you need this as an ability at all. And then we have Damnation. This will consume 30% of Osiris max HP and grants Jammed. So this might be good with like an Enmity set or something like that. Because you'll be cutting your own HP and also get a pretty big attack boost based on how low your health is. Which can be fine. But generally, it's better to just kind of, uh, if you don't have a Mortal Pain Act, it's better to kind of stay near full HP no matter what, because you don't want to be in a situation where you're going to die at a low health value. But I guess if you don't want to run less is more, this could be something to run alongside a Mortal Pain, maybe run it with alongside Forgotten Tales as well. So you have like three kind of options here as like a buffs to yourself to um, kind of live at low HP and get a lot of benefit out of it. But the problem is when these skills are on their downtime phase or low cooldown, you're not going to get much benefit out of that. And if you're not running that unique sigil that lowers his cooldown, you're not going to be able to have it up super often. And once again, I don't really think it's going to be super beneficial to run that stuff because most of your damage is still just going to be coming out of using your heavy attacks. So just kind of spamming the combo B is just going to be the best option for maximum damage even above this because the attack boost doesn't matter if you're already hitting caps anyway. We have Umbral Eclipse. This inflicts a slow on nearby foes. Slow can be pretty useful as a status effect, so this could be another skill you might end up running depending on what kind of team composition you're with or what kind of setup you're with or what anything like that. So this could be something that could be actually be kind of useful just because slow can be a pretty nice effect to have. Not something that is absolutely necessary, especially if you're not in coordinated team play, but it is something that can be nice as a skill compared to these other his other options at least. And then the final skill we have is Nether Wrath. This basically allows him while it is active to take damage in place of his allies and to defend allies more. 
It's going to be okay if you're trying to run them as a tank, I guess, especially since with Undying, you can live with 1 HP basically no matter what. But most of the time, I don't really recommend running this either, because most al allies are going to be able to keep themselves healed. They'll probably have Potion Hoarder as well to keep themselves safe uh, as far as maximum health I also. So uh, this just isn't really a super necessary skill to run right now. So let's briefly take a look at Masteries. So the main things you're looking out for here are normal attack damage cap up, critical hit rate up, and um, attack up probably in that order. I do find it hilarious. This is the character I finally got skill cap up 20% on when I wasn't even looking for that. I was just looking for attack up and crit rate up, but uh, the world works in mysterious ways, I suppose. But um, yeah, normal attack damage cap up is going to be the most important thing to get as much damage as possible out of your heavy attacks. Uh, critical hit rate up is always really nice. Make sure you're hitting that 100% value if you can to get us all the damage out of your critical hits. And then attack up is just nice to make sure you're capping everything when you need to. And maybe you can ditch one of the attack boosters on your sigils. It really depends. But um, yeah, those are probably going to be the main things. Um, Skybound art damage cap up could be okay, but he kind of has really bad Skybound art anyway, and it's not going to be your main focus outside of just kind of stunning the enemy temporarily. But um, yeah. Those are the main things to look out for here. Skill damage cap up does not really matter on him at all to ignore the, the fact that I got 20% on him anyway, but you know, just it, it's it is kind of funny at least. All right, let's take a look at more practical combat application now. Here's a very quick spoiler warning on later game raids if you're a little worried about that. I feel like this is a pretty good fight for showcasing a lot of the benefits of Foster Argon, especially on dying just because of the creative ways you can use it in this fight. So starting things off, because I know the kind of the boss patterns and how PAA likes to move, I'm able to immediately uh, cancel my two light attacks and the heavy attacks. I know he's going to dodge to the right there after his initial attack, which is really nice. I'm also able to kind of time my charge attack to uh, get the link attack afterwards, which normally you're not going to be able to do, because normally you'll ignore link attacks to make sure you get your charge attacks off, because they're more important and do a lot more damage. But in that specific case, it was really nice for me to be able to do that. We've already gotten him to 70% really quickly here. I kind of misplay a little bit by not being able to cancel perfectly um, on one of my rolls in this specific fight, which is a little bad on me, my part. Especially because the overdrive wind box kind of cancels my uh, attacks there, and then he immediately kind of goes into this kind of phase where you do a lot less damage to him. That's not really a big deal, though, because this is where I'm going to be able to take a lot of the benefit of Undying. And uh, as you can check my SBA bar in the top of the uh, screen, it goes up again incredibly quickly because of this constant damage field, so I'm going to be able to get SB up extremely quickly, which is going to allow us in this fight really fast. <clears throat> so I'm going to wait and uh, get a lot of damage out of that last charge attack there, now that his um, damage reduction is gone. And now at this point, I'm going to ignore the link attack, so I get a bunch of damage out of this, the 1.6 million on both of those attacks, which is over 3 million. And now I'm just going to be uh, using my attacks even more. I go ahead and use my uh, special move because I think uh, one of my allies can get their meter up in time if I do. They don't quite get it up, but it doesn't really matter. I do still stun the bar, delay the elemental shift a little bit, and uh, it doesn't end up mattering too much because we're still able to end the fight incredibly fast. And uh, From this point, I'm just going to be spamming my heavy attacks here, and it's really just going to be a pretty easy fight in general. And we're going to end it before he gets to the Firefly phase, before the element shifting goes off, if I remember correctly. Or it might be very close, I'm not, I can't quite remember. But yeah, I think uh, Narmaya and uh, Oigen here just kind of stun lock him the rest of the time here. And uh, I don't even think he gets the elemental shift off, which is pretty, pretty crazy here, just in general. And you'd be surprised at how insanely repeatable this can be. Like, I'm just going to show the same fight again. Alright, I accidentally used my charge attack there, but it wasn't really a big deal to combo A. I just immediately go into another light attack into combo B at that point, and I was able to kind of go into my combo B charge attack. Of course, now he's starting to move some, which is a little annoying. So he immediately goes into the uh, Enrage, which is fine, doesn't really matter at this point. Because uh, we got plenty of damage to kill him at this point, so just one more charge attack kind of gets the job done here. And uh, like I said, you'd be very surprised at how insanely repeatable this is. I'm just going to show off one more fight. I had the same group of people with me because we kind of just were farming it for a while because of just how easy and quick all of these fights were going. I open up basically the exact same way. This fight goes on a little bit longer because uh, our timings were not as good as we would have. Or were not as good this time around, unfortunately. Not really a huge deal. I do take some damage there, but thanks to the... Benefits of Stout Heart and Defense buff doesn't really matter too much. 
that was it, that I took some damage from the start of that. But otherwise, this general strategy is the same. Just light, light, heavy, heavy. Sometimes can't see your lights with rolls if uh, you think you can see properly to do that. Uh, otherwise, just make sure that you are being careful. Once again, I'm going to activate Undying here and uh, go into the middle of this little circle here so I get SBA like immediately and get a damage boost from low on health so I don't, or just get another damage boost so the lack of stamina of helping me here doesn't really matter basically. And I'm just gonna hold on to my second set of heavy attacks here just to make sure that was actually an accident. I mean, it did not mean to use a light attack there. That's okay though. Do get at least one damage cap hit there. And now I ignore the link attack one more time because I want to get these uh, attacks off. He gets moved out of the way of one of the attacks, unfortunately, which is a little unfortunate. That's one of the things about mobility, which can be a little annoying here. And Element Shift is kind of ticking up pretty fast this time. I'm trying to save my SBA for my allies to get as much SBA meter as they can here. Once my Undying wears off, I make sure to heal myself, because I don't want to be low on health when I don't have any protection. And now that the Elemental Shift is almost fully up, I go ahead and use my SBA to try to delay this. And uh, hopefully Eugen is able to get his in time. He was not able to, unfortunately. He got to like 99, which was a little sad, but uh, not the biggest deal in the world. We'll just have to deal with a little a bit of an extra phase here, which isn't really too bad. But overall, still a pretty simple and easy fight regardless. Like I said, though, you'd be surprised at how insanely repeatable this ends up being. I go ahead and back out instead of worrying about the second combo because I don't have him dying anymore. And it's pretty easy to uh, just kind of evade most things here. I'm just farming invincibility off of this for no reason other than it looks cool. And then I end up failing that time because I'm bad at the game, but that's okay. Not a big deal. And now the phase is over, the fight's just going to basically be over at this point. Uh, Oigen did try to get his attack off, by the way. It looks like he was just a little bit too late uh, before the special phase went off. And now at this point, now that EO has activated this and Narmaya and Oigen both have their 100% gauges up, the fight should just be over at this point. So I'm just going to spam heavy attacks and that's going to be it. So your combo B, windmill, double slice heavy attacks are easily your best bet for doing a lot of damage in this game. Uh, some of the easily the hardest hitting attacks basically consistently in this game which is really, really nice. It gives him probably the highest consistent damage output in the game, except maybe Percival and maybe Melee Rockin', but if you're running Melee Rockin', you're cringe. But regardless, he's easily, easily up there in the top three. And uh, even if he has some mobility issues or enemies can move away while he's trying to charge his attacks, you can still output a lot of damage with him, especially if you know how enemies move, and especially if you can uh, take advantage of downtime segments as well. You can do a lot with Vasaraga and end fights incredibly quickly if you know what you're doing, which is really nice. I think that's going to cover it for this guide video. I hope I wasn't uh, too out of it since I am sick, but I do appreciate you guys for watching, and uh, I hope you do, did learn something from watching. And um, if you did, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and uh, please give me any feedback in the comments on how I can improve this any further, or if I left something out that's really important or anything like that. Please look forward to all of my future guides on the game. I've still got nine more characters that are currently out to cover. I'll definitely be covering the new characters when they come out as well. I'll probably be covering new raids as they come out also at this point. So please look forward to that. And once again, thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful and blessed day. And hopefully I'll see you back here soon.